Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a micro video. Uh, in this topic video, we're going to be covering the relevance of the coefficients of three different elasticities of demand. So a coefficient is just basically a number, it's a value. Uh, and elasticity is essentially just a number. You put some, put some figures into an equation, into a formula, and a number pops out. That coefficient could be high, in which case we say that demand is elastic, or it could be a low figure, demand is inelastic. Indeed, it could be zero, perfectly inelastic, or infinity, perfectly elastic. There are three elasticities of demand that you need to focus on. I want to emphasize a couple of very key exam points. There have been quite important changes to the exam specifications and what examiners will expect to see from you. So first of all, price elasticity of demand, PED. The formula is the percentage change in quantity demanded of good X divided by the percentage change in the price of good X. Now normally, uh, price elasticity demand will be negative. There's an inverse relationship between the quantity demanded and the change in price. However, really key, new specifications require students to include the minus or the plus signs along with the coefficient. So please remember to do that even with price elasticity of demand. In terms of the coefficients, well, if the coefficient is zero, then demand is perfectly price inelastic. By the way, again, another exam point, please remember to put the word price before elastic or inelastic. Saying that demand is elastic or inelastic is not accurate enough for the examiners from 2019 onwards. So if the elasticity is less than one, demand is price inelastic. Um, if it's greater than one, demand is price elastic. If it's infinity, demand is perfectly price elastic. Of course, the elasticity could be one, which would give you unitary price elasticity. So those are the values of the coefficients for that. Moving on to income elasticity of demand, or YED, which tries to capture how responsive is demand to a change in the, the income of consumers. Again, the formula, percentage change in quantity demanded of good X, divided this time by the change in percentage terms in consumer income. Essentially, three types of products to look at here. So if you take a normal necessity product, maybe fresh fruit or toothpaste, the income elasticity is positive, so you need to put the sign in, but the coefficient will be less than plus one, somewhere between zero and, and plus one. However, for a normal luxury product, uh, who knows, fine wines, overseas holidays, um, luxury items, fine foods and things, the income elasticity is positive again, but this time the coefficient is greater than plus one. And of course, for inferior goods, the income elasticity of demand is negative, own label foods, bus transport, cigarettes, for example, and this time the coefficient will be less than zero. Again, Important exam point, always remember now from 2019 onwards to put the signs in. And finally, cross price elasticity, XED, the responsiveness of the change in quantity demanded for good A uh, following a change in the price of another product, good B. Two types of products again to look at here for substitute goods, goods in competitive demand, different makes of smartphone or choice of food retailer. The uh, substitute goods have a positive cross price elasticity demand. Price of good X goes up, demand for a substitute good Y goes up. Complementary goods are goods and services in joint demand. They tend to be bought together and they will have a negative cross elasticity of demand. And when you're putting the numbers in, the sign will make a difference. The higher is the coefficient for both of these products, the stronger is that cross price relationship between two goods and services. Any unrelated products will have a zero cross price elasticity demand. So there we go, a quick journey through the concept of coefficients of elasticity of demand.